Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are not going to be working in my sketchbook as the kind people at ArtX actually sent me some of their Oreo sketch markers for me to try. And this is specifically their 66 pastel marker set. So it comes in this really cute case. And here you can see it says Artex Oros Sketch Markers. So their Oros markers actually have the chisel tip and the brush nib versus their other line, which actually has the chisel tip and the bullet nib. So this whole set actually has a really large range of pastel colors, which I'm super excited to try out. So you can see all the colors right here. And let me show you guys the markers really quickly before we get on to swatching. So on each end of the caps, it obviously has the colors as well as a number to help label on which color it actually is. It has no color names, so if you're planning to do swatches, make sure to label the numbers so you know which color you're using. So like I mentioned earlier, the markers have a brush side and a chisel tip side. So this side is the brush tip and this side is the chisel tip. And this helps you with versatility for kind of covering large areas or if you want to use the brush tip and you can use it to help blend and have that more flexible nib to have both larger and smaller lines. So the barrel itself is more triangular which prevents it from rolling which is quite nice and I wanted to show you guys about this cute box. It's just not just the case. It's actually a nice stand. Sorry for this weird angle. It's kind of like the only way for me to show you guys properly. But basically you open the lid and the lid is angled in such a way that you're allowed to place your markers in a stand kind of way which makes it a lot easier for you to display and work with. So for me, I decided to dump out all the markers and to rearrange them in order of how they have the color swatches. So I started from the bottom working my way to the top and what I found interesting is that in this set, even though it's like a full on pastel set, they do include a just a straight up black color which is kind of nice because I do think that with the contrast of black and pastel colors you can create some really cool artwork and I'll show you guys one of them today but we're basically going to be working on two artwork today so or two artworks today should I say so yeah I'm just quickly going through and doing the color swatches I highly recommend you guys do color swatch on the paper that they provide you with alongside with whatever paper you like to work with so you can see how the markers react and just layering and just how the color vibrancy is on the paper that you decide to use it on. So for the most part, every color seems really great to me. They seem very light and pastel, some lighter than others, but for the most part, all of them are fairly light, if not just like barely into that mid-tone range. So to kind of do an experiment on the blending, I'm using a piece of cardstock at the moment and I am kind of picking a few colors to do a simple gradient across so I can show you guys the blending capability of the actual alcohol markers. Just because that's kind of like the purpose of having alcohol markers in such a way is that they have really good blending capability. They also have wonderful amount of, I guess like layering of the colors too. So I wanted to show you guys in a more practical way before we actually head off to do any artwork with them. So I'm labeling also the colors. So if you guys have a similar set, you can kind of color match to the gradient if you would like to. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the peach one in a little bit because you can kind of see between 313 and 318, there is a bit of that weird grayish glob of... I don't know if it's like unmixed ink right there, but I'll show you guys in a bit what that looks like when it's properly blended because it's most likely just user error on my side. Um, the green and the blue turned out quite well. Purple turned out actually nicer than I thought, even though the second color that I used ended up being a lot warmer of a purple compared to the rest that I used. So here kind of you can see a overview of the entire little swatches that I did. So pretty seamless for the most part. And you can get a really nice gradient even with just four colors. But I'm just going to show you guys at the very bottom what this is supposed to look like. So with a little bit better technique, I guess, I was able to achieve a much smoother gradient with this kind of orange to peach combo. So this is still the 313, the 318 right here. Just wanted to make sure that you guys don't think it's the marker's fault. It's just user error of me blending not too properly with this version. 
So to kind of see more of the capabilities of the markers, we're going to be doing two illustrations like I mentioned earlier, just so you guys can see the markers in more of a practical setting. I accidentally printed my OC Sato's sketch onto sticker paper rather than on normal printer paper, but we are going to be transferring my sketch onto a kind of like Bristol board paper that I've used in the past, which I find works really well with alcohol markers. So we're going to go ahead and transfer by using this light pad or whatever you want to call this tracing light pad thing. So I'm going to dim the light so you guys can see properly. Um, basically, I'm still working in normal sunlight. This is just for kind of filming purposes so you guys can see how I'm coloring or not coloring, how I'm doing the line work for this particular sketch. So like I said, I did my sketch prior and I did do it digitally on my iPad just because I didn't really want to fuss with sketching directly onto the paper. So using the light pad and having my paper kind of like on top of one another, I'm able to see the printed sketch underneath so that I can just do the line work directly onto my good paper. So for the line work, I am using water-based markers because alcohol markers do not react with water-based markers. So I'm doing the line work with the water-based markers, knowing that they won't smudge or budge when I actually color and go over the lines. So I did do a test prior to this to make sure that that was the case. So please do test out your liners or whatever you want to use for line work before using your markers, just to make sure you don't end up with a lot of smudging and stuff on your paper that you desire to use for your drawing or illustrations. So for today's drawing, I am drawing my OC Sato just because overall her color palette's quite light and I feel like it fits the pastel theme a lot easier than some of my other OCs and I didn't really want to finagle with thinking about other characters that could fit with the pastel theme. So for the line work, like I said, I am inking directly onto the paper. And even though this is a little bit nerve wracking, I did do my best to just ink where I thought would work out nicely and, you know, have the confidence in my lines and in my sketch, because hopefully I sketched things clean enough for me to recognize what is what. I decided to also leave in a little bit of real time footage of me inking here and there for both this one and the other one, just because I know some people find line work or just inking in general quite therapeutic and just very satisfying to watch. So hopefully I can kind of satisfy that itch a little bit for some of you guys. For me, I try my best to be confident with my strokes for line work just because sometimes when I do grow, like go a little bit slower, some of my lines become very shaky or just they stop very bluntly rather than having like a natural nice taper at the end, which I usually like to have ex like especially for like hair or just like certain lines that I feel like need a little bit more line weight. But you can see also a lot of the darker areas, I am also manually putting in some line weight just to kind of push the drawing a little bit. And later on, we are going to be using other water-based markers to help darken some of the areas just because the reason why I'm even using these water-based markers, other than the fact that they're not going to affect with the alcohol markers, is just because I do like the range of the colors I have to have a more softer look. Now, I'm going to be hopefully putting in the description the Sato line work for you guys to use if you would wish to kind of print it out and color along or just to do some practice, then you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to say that uh, please don't abuse this. So if you do plan to use my lines for, you know, testing or practice or whatever you want to use it for, please don't like claim it as your own or repost or say like, you know, this is my OC that I drew and colored kind of thing. So yeah, if that ends up happening, I am just not going to upload the line work for people. I know some people requested that I would upload the line work whenever I do any marker drawings. So I feel like if I'm going to continue doing that, then also respect my choices as well. So so I do appreciate that. 
So on to the actual coloring portion. Uh, the skin, I ended up layering, I think, three base tones together, kind of more in the peachy yellowish range. And the reason being is that Sato's hair is kind of similar in value, but I wanted to push her hair to be a lot more pink rather than the peach tone. And I wanted to push her skin to be a little bit more yellowy just because I wanted to have that contrast. Otherwise, the entire piece might look too peachy if that makes sense. So for the skin, um, I layered, like I said, kind of like free peach-ish tones and orangey tones. And then I kind of darkened certain areas with a pale purple or like the pastel purples. I think one of the lavenders and even a blue color. But then for her eyes, her eyes are actually a lot darker. They're kind of more of a turquoise color or a darker, more bluer version compared to Masaki's green eyes. So for Sato, I did struggle to layer up the colors to be correct, but later on, we are going to be adding a little bit more line work to kind of push the eyes to be a little bit more stronger, if that makes sense, like a little bit more contrast. So the kind of like i don't want her eyes to look too glassy or too foggy i didn't really do the pupils too much and i feel like the line work around the eyes just don't fit but for the most part i think the pastel colors and pastel theme kind of fits sato the most so i had not really too much of an issue picking colors so for her hair like i said i kind of pushed it towards more of a pinky ish more color if that makes sense and then for some of the shadows i did pull out one of the orange colors to deepen it a little bit but then i noticed that this purple color works the best for the shadows and for the most part the way that i'm coloring is very much mostly layering up the colors rather than blending which is what pushed me to do a second illustration because I wanted to do a lot more blending so you guys can see the blending capabilities of the markers because I know that's kind of the reason why a lot of people want to even use alcohol markers for certain drawings or for illustrations and stuff because you can have that smooth transition between colors and blending capabilities are usually a lot better with alcohol markers. So first, like for the most part, I had a lot of fun just working with the markers and blending the colors here and there, like very minimal if anything but it works out quite well i think i blended the most on her kind of like dress kind of blue top that she has on so yeah other than that i think i blended a little bit more on the skin but for the hair i definitely just did more of a layering approach feels more cell shady ish if anything compared to maybe how i usually work but for the most part i think it fits this kind of theme for Sato. At least maybe it's because the way how I layered her hair as well. And here is kind of like the finished product, but we are going to kind of spruce up the line work a little bit more with these water-based markers. So I'm going to go ahead and change to a dark brown and kind of like darken up her eye line. I'm going to darken up some of the dark um, already kind of places where I did what am I saying? Thicker line work or like I tried to make the line variation a little bit more prominent. So that happens a lot in the corners. So that's why I'm kind of going to focus a lot more of the darker values other than the eyes. Because if I just did only her eyes, it would make everything else look too light and there'll be too much focus there. So I'm trying to do my best, like I'm gonna try my best to make sure that I'm picking places that need darker values so that they don't stand out too much. But if they do, then it kind of makes more sense where kind of like depending on the placement. Can you guys tell my, my brain is fried? I'm trying a new editing program by the way. So I feel like I'm a little bit out of my element, like watching my own video, but also doing the voiceover. So I apologize that I'm probably stuttering and making no sense here and there. But if anything, hopefully you guys are interested in the markers because I do think this pastel set actually is, has very fun colors and a good range. One thing that I do kind of wish though, I'm not sure if it's totally necessary for a lot of people, but for me, I kind of wish there was a pastel brown color and maybe a just like a neutral pastel gray color that isn't like super, super light. And the reason being is that having like something super neutral would be just very nice to have other than just like straight up black. There is some purples that kind of almost hit that gray area, which is kind of nice. 
but for browns, I feel like there's no other choices for it. There are some colors that you could pass for brown, but I feel like there's nothing close enough that feels almost neutral rather than too orangey, if that makes sense. So I kind of hope that maybe in the future, if I can, I would like to see more of like a pastel brown um, into a set or something like that. I think that would be kind of nice to have. So for the second illustration though, uh, we are going to be following the same steps, but let me talk about the character a little bit because this is probably new for people, but for me it feels like something that I've been wanting to draw for quite a while. So in a previous sketchbook, I've also drawn a character similar to this because I wanted another character to kind of be in a flower zine that kind of feels a little bit more... I don't even know if it's like deadpan, but very just black and white. So I just wanted to have either like stark kind of white clothing and then kind of really pungent black hair or something very contrasty to kind of complement a lot more of the softer flower colors that I potentially wanted to paint and draw. And this is one of the characters that I came up with kind of like, not like intentionally because I kind of drew her randomly when I was sketching for today's drawing but she does resemble a lot more of the character that I was drawing in my sketchbook at that time which also resembles another character that I drew when I was in like the eighth grade which had I think in that one she has pink hair but it's the same length similar style and just like a plain white dress was kind of the vibe so I feel like it's like the same character and maybe I'm just like wanting a character like this to draw for a long time. There's another kind of like male character aesthetic that I would like to draw, but I feel like it's too close to Wanu. So I don't know. I'll talk about that in a different video. So let's get on to the coloring. So similar steps. I did kind of section off different colors for the line work so that we have some softer kind of more warmer colors for her skin and then the kind of darker cooler colors for everywhere else. So for this character because I didn't want the skin tone to be similar to Sato's I decided to lean her a little bit more pink and a little bit uh, lighter if that makes sense and less intense compared to Sato. Sato became very almost orangey if anything so I wanted to make sure that this one became a little bit more kind of pinkish and I decided to keep this in real time for certain parts but I wanted to show the blending capability like I mentioned earlier so I'm blending a I think two different purples and I'm blending kind of this more peachy or orange color together so that we can kind of get more of a vibrant intense shadow for her skin and I'm gonna do something very similar to her dress in a little bit and her dress is actually my favorite part of this illustration just because of how seamless the blending worked but also the colors that I chose because I mentioned earlier that I find that pastel colors are a little bit more easier to work with and a little bit more forgiving. And the reason being it might be because of the value of it is quite light so you can actually take your time to layer colors and because they tend to be not as vibrant, well I guess it depends on your pastel colors. Some of them are super vibrant and then some of them are a little bit more subdued and because of that I feel like you get a little bit more wiggle room about what you layer next to each other and they feel not out of place. So for her dress, I kind of used a pastel like purpley blue as kind of the base, but you can see I was able to seamlessly add in more of that skin tone, which feels a little bit more orangey yellow right underneath that purpley blue color, which reads kind of grayish. And I was able to blend it super nicely together. And we kind of have a nice kind of seamless gradient from a warmer color to a cooler color, which I love doing for white clothing especially so I love messing around with those values and those hues and I kind of did something similar to right here but I decided to put more of a orangey base and I'm putting that same purpley blue on top and you can kind of see the orange is kind of bleeding underneath it and I think it looks super pretty and I just basically started to fuss around with the rest of her clothing folds adding a little bit more cooler tones so that it can bleed nicely into those kind of peachy yellow tones that I added. Now, another place that I added more gradients is to her hair, but 
I had plans to make her hair completely black, so I decided that I would just leave her band of highlights on the top of her hair to be more, not like rainbowy, but it's kind of like a blue to yellow gradient with having purple and pink to kind of buffer those. So because I didn't have to be too clean about it because I was going to add black to cover it anyways. I'm just basically blending away and we're going to see how that looks after I put in this kind of matte black look for her hair. Now I kind of wish I separated the... I guess like sections of her hair a little bit better so that the black would read a little bit more... I don't know, like have a little bit more dimension rather than being 100% completely flat. But for the most part, I actually really like how this one turned out. And it might be also the fact that the background color that I'm going to do for her is also going to be black. I kind of don't like the thick border that I'm going to give her in a bit, but we'll see in a little bit what that's going to look like. So I did map out for the most part where I wanted to have certain sections to be white and where I wanted them to be just like completely matte black. I kind of wish that I planned a little bit more. So like I said, it wouldn't be as flat, but for the most part, I think it kind of works out. Um, I think also this having more black around her and then kind of on the lower part kind of helps bring it together. It looks a little awkward just because of how I have the tape laid out that it kind of looks like it should be covering more of like the top of her head. But once I get rid of the tape, it kind of fits into that box little background for her. And I think she turned out pretty cute, but we have one more step. So her eyes look a little bit washed out. So let's go ahead and give a little bit more definition to her before we consider her completely done. So going back with kind of like a black water-based marker to do the detailing. So I highly recommend you guys giving a try if you have water-based markers to use them alongside with your alcohol markers because uh, for the most part, I had no issues with any bleeding of any sort. So these water-based markers really work well as the line art base for my water, like for the alcohol markers, which I had a super blast with coloring I said that in the wrong order. I had a super blast coloring with them because yeah, it was just a super easy process. The colors are very vibrant and they actually have some really soft pastel colors that I really enjoyed. So here's the two illustrations side by side and you can kind of see the difference. I do really enjoy the fact that they included this a matte kind of black, which feels, I don't know, very punchy next to all these pastel colors. I really like the combination together. I think it's quite neat. So if you guys are interested in checking out these markers, please check out the description. And thank you again to Artex for sponsoring today's video and letting me try out these markers for today's illustrations. I had a, a lot of fun just working with markers again. It's been a little bit since I've used alcohol markers like to this extent. I feel like I've only used them for like certain doodles and just like smaller drawings where I kind of pick out maybe one or two colors but having this whole range and the pastel colors I think match so well with each other is just really fun to use. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit of close-ups as well because I wanted to show the difference between Sato's and this Unname the Girls kind of like technique where I was coloring. So for hers it's much more soft and a lot of more blending of the colors and stuff and the one for Sato was very much what for me felt like just layering of colors and making it very uh, cell shady, if anything. And I feel like the other one feels a little bit more soft shaded. So I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.